And I suppose I can say with that, and by with that I mean as of 12 o'clock midnight, it is no longer Monday. We are now at Tuesday. So I guess nothing left to say other than happy Tuesday, everybody. So, yep. Now that Monday's over, we can now focus on the ultimate goal, which is to get through today so we can get to tomorrow, then Thursday, then Friday, and then and the weekend, because the weekend is always super nice. But then again, any day of the week can be nice, if you can make it so. So, wow, that's, sorry, I just had a bit of a brain fart. Um, but yeah, I'd say I'm feeling pretty good lately. I mean, I was feeling... You know, I'm, I was feeling lucky yesterday, and don't let the fact that I'm wearing a gray shirt fool you. I'm feeling pretty good today, too. You know, it's like, um, I don't know what the story's from, but the joke is, uh, you know, oh, the curtains were blue because it was some sort of metaphor for how they were feeling depressed. How about the fact that the curtains were just blue, please? I mean, I could be wearing, like, the most inappropriate color for whatever happy means, and I can still be happy. Again, it's not what you look like, it's what you feel within. And if you feel good on the inside, then you're more likely to feel good on the outside. Feeling good is always important to me. Then again, you guys don't know that at this point. I mean, I've only been doing this for 226 days as of right now. So, yeah. Pretty sure it's safe to say this is no longer a New Year's resolution. But a full-blown, holy cow, I love to do this. Speaking of things I love, another thing I've sort of been, um, refreshing myself on lately, and honestly, where I'm at right now, a lot of people are, like, catching up on shows like Orange is the New Black, and Shameless, and all those other shows, but... There is one show that's actually been on for quite a number of years that I honestly am surprised a lot of people don't really talk about because it really is a good show. And that show is, it's actually called Inside the Actress Studio with, hosted by James Lipton. Oh, and basically it's, um, it takes place at, uh, the Acting Academy at Pace University, where James Lipton, as like a, as an actor on stage, and, you know, asks them about, you know, their life. Basically, it's sort of like a biography in, like, real life, I guess. You know, like, and talk about the movies they're in, what their experiences are, and all that other good stuff. But the thing that I always looked forward to during out of the episodes of Inside the Actor Studio that I've seen, and there's a lot of them. Like, seriously. I can't even... Oh, I'm sure if I were to look up on the internet, I'm positive I would find, like, the list of every single episode of that show ever made and or aired. But the thing I always look forward to is toward the end, when James Lipton asks each celebrity or actor... The, oh, well, they're, they're, they're all actors, I should say. You can be a celebrity and not an actor. Just so we're clear. I mean, if Megan Fox is any indication, or Kim Kardashian, pretty much any, like, spoiled rich girl who's famous for being famous, they can be, like, celebrities. Or professional athletes can be celebrities in a way. You know, like LeBron James. So, yeah. Basically... All actors are, all famous actors are celebrities, but not all celebrities are famous actors. Kind of like the whole, all squares are rectangles, but not all rectangles are squares scenario. Tomato, tomato, Dalek, Dalek, Roboto, Roboto, Potato, Potato, Key, and Kai. Shout out for the Kingdom Hearts reference. So, with that said, the thing I was looking forward to are the 10 questions that James Lipton asks each actor toward the end before he leaves them alone with the students that are 
in the audience. And another thing that's always fascinating me about the audience is they all range from like different ages. And I find that really cool. Because it shows, because in a way it technically shows that you're never too old to try doing something new. Or you're never too young to try something new for that matter. Who knows? So, the t so basically, as I'm hearing these 10 questions over the years, and it's taken me now to realize this, I wondered, what would I say if I was ever asked those 10 questions? What if I was on Inside the Actors Studio, and that's probably never going to happen, but say I was, and I was asked, these all 10 important questions, what would I say? Or how would I answer them? Well, I actually have given this a lot of thought. And while I won't go so far as to say that these are the definitive answers, whether or not they change over time, if I were to tell you the answers to the questions, at least for me, you'd get a deeper perspective as to who I am, or something like that. I don't know. You don't take it for what it is. So, the first question is, what is your favorite word? Believe it or not, my favorite word is actually the favorite word of one of my all-time favorite voiceover actresses, Colleen Clinkenbeard who does the voice of Luffy on One Piece, or Urza from Fairy Tale, And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Watch my uh, video on day one... I'm sorry, I'm... Sorry, I'm very far. On day 103, to get a better idea of who I'm referring to. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. What, April 13th? Oh, yeah, it is 103. It would be day 100. Watch day 103 for more information on that. But all I need to know is that her favorite word and my favorite word is a very long word, but with a very simple meaning. It's called flossanasanilification. And I'm not even sure I pronounce it right. Flossanasanilification. Yeah, that, that's how you pronounce it, I think. And, yes. It's one of the longest words in the dictionary. It may very well be the longest word in the dictionary. But believe it or not, as long as that word is, it's actually quite simple in meaning. It basically means to judge something that is deemed worthless. I actually find that word quite fascinating. I really do like it a lot because, in a way, it's a paradox of sorts. Because why would you judge something that's deemed worthless? I mean, if it's worthless, why judge it at all? Or ex exactly, like, what's the point of judging something that's worthless? But I find the paradox in that kind of fun. But full disclosure, ladies and gentlemen, you are not worthless. Nobody is. Want to clear the air on that one. I'm not worthless. You are not worthless. No one is put on this earth to be useless. And with that said, the second question is, what is my least favorite word? Well, I don't have a least favorite word per se. In fact, that's actually why I said these aren't my definitive answers. Basically, my least favorite word is pretty much anything that would promote harm or negativity Basically, anything that brings you down. And I don't want to do that. I'm, I never want to bring anyone down. I shouldn't have to do that to be cool or anything like that. So, there's that. Um, let's see. And, that, and keep in mind, I may, this may not be the exact order, but it's a general idea. So, the third question is, what sound or noise do you like? Well... Again, I don't have one favorite sound I like in general. Although, I could just be, you know, cheeky and say, insert Simon and Garfunkel song here. But, I'll say, any sound 
that promotes positivity. You know, it could be the beautiful sound of a child, of a, of a child's laughter, or crying, or showing emotion. Hey, there's never wrong, there's never anything wrong with crying. Again, nobody's worthless. So, there's that. So the other, the fourth question is, what sound or noise do you not like? Well, again, it's whatever can promote, whatever promotes harm or negativity or anything bad. I don't like those sounds. And they could be different for everyone. I mean, people don't like nails on the chalkboard. People don't like the sound of like the, like the like air horn sound in someone's ear. Again, it varies. And honestly, if it promotes negativity, I don't like that. So, this next question is, and keep in mind, this is, um, this can be taken the wrong way if I don't explain this. But basically, the question's asking what motivates you or inspires you. But it's worded as, what turns you on? Well, positivity. That turns me on. And what turns you off is the next question. Honestly, one thing that really does turn me off outside of making fun of others for crying, I really can't stand sarcasm that's used in an unnecessary fashion. Like, if I were to politely walk up to someone and ask what time it is, they would say, time for you to get a watch. Really, dude? Do you really need to do that? I'm just asking you a simple question, and I don't have my phone or a watch on me, yet... And I don't know if you do or not either, but you can at least sort of humor me and be polite about the fact that I don't know what the time is, or you don't know what the time is or whatever. So, yeah, unnecessary sarcasm. Or, again, making fun of others for crying or showing emotion. Those are huge turnoffs for me, and pet peeves as well. So, this next question... And this is where this is the question everybody looks forward to, and this is the one I wasn't looking forward to when coming up with this video. What is your favorite curse word? Now, I made it very clear. I try not to curse in these videos. And if I do, I always say I'm always going to say, listen, if you don't want to hear a curse word or you have children in the room, you don't want to hear it, you know, you can stop the video here, skip ahead, yada yada yada. But believe it or not, my favorite word Curses! See, it didn't need to be, didn't need to sound bad or profound or vulgar to get the point across. I mean, technically, curses is the first word, first curse word that we ever know, because it promotes the emotion. It, you know, it, it's basically, you know, simple. It doesn't need to be vulgar or, pro or promote any bad things in order to. Get the point across. So the next question is, that's seven. Question eight is, what profession other than your own would you like to do? Well, my dream job is to become a voiceover actor. So, yeah, there's definitely that. Who knows, maybe these videos will lead into something like that. I don't know. What? And the ninth question is, what profession do you never want to do, or do you absolutely not want to do? Personally, that one's hard for me because, well, actually, it's not hard. There's a lot of jobs I don't want to do. Honestly, the one job I absolutely never want to do is anything that involves, like, super-duper heavy manual labor. I'm just really lazy like that, ladies and gentlemen. That's I'm I'm lazy. It's a curse. And finally, if heaven exists, what would you like God to say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? Now, you all now I've said this before in my videos. I'm Catholic. Of course, I believe that heaven exists. But that being said, when I get to heaven, and you know what. I get the feeling that when I see God, when I arrive at the pearly gates, he's going to have one giant laugh 
He'll be like, ha, 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 ha. Oh, man, you were great. Okay, come on in. We have cookies and punch. And with that, I just came up with the title of today's video. So, like, favorite, so with that, like, favorite, share, and hit that subscribe button. I could really use the support. I'm humbled I made this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today. I'm hopeful that we all have a wonderful Tuesday. And remember, if any of you guys ever want to talk or chat, I'm always going to be here to lend an ear. And I'll always have your back. So take care, everybody.